Once again, 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. And as we said earlier, streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and audio and video live on RTC Channel 4. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Thank you, Tom. Hey, nice to have you back with us. And, of course, if you have a smartphone, you can download the TuneIn Radio app or an app similar to that and take us wherever you happen to be going. Well, we're pleased to be joined at Giretti's downtown Rochester this morning. By the way, if you're coming through town, you want to stop at Giretti's 7th and Main, please do so. We're going to buy coffee for you right on up till uh, a little while yet this morning. And that's on us, so we're glad to have you with us. And we want to thank Don and all the folks at Giretti's for all their hospitality this morning. We're joined this morning by Michelle Livinghouse and Jack Jordan, who are the candidates for State Representative District 17. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thanks for good, being here. Good morning. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks very much for coming in. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your particular backgrounds. We'll start with Michelle in terms of where you're coming from and uh, things that folks maybe don't know about you. Well, I'm from Plymouth, and uh, for the past 18 and a half years, I have been an adult protective service investigator serving mostly Marshall and Kosciuszko counties and that's serving people over the age of 18 who have some kind of vulnerability or disability, um, many elderly folks and um, I decided about two years ago after a meeting um, that uh, was held at Triton High School uh, that public education was a real concern and there was no had not been a Democratic challenger uh, for state rep race since the redistricting after the last census. So um, I'm no stranger to politics. Um, I have worked in, I, I gotta give my age away here, but I have worked in Democratic Party politics since my mother sent me out at the age of 11 <laughs> to help pull her precinct. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, and I like Phyllis uh, Biddinger, I served as a uh, county chair for 12 years, and I served a term on the Plymouth City Council. Jack Jordan, tell us about yourself a little bit. Well, I'm a uh, Bremen native, seventh generation, uh, raised in a small farm there. My dad was worked for a trucking company. My mom was the school secretary, so could never get away with anything. And um, in those days, it was the Northern Lakes Conference, so uh, Rochester and Bremen had some good football, <laughs> basketball, they track, did. golf, tennis. Sure. Yeah, so uh, we spent a lot of time down in Rochester and Rochester folks coming up to Bremen. Um, I uh, actually have uh, two degrees, one in pastoral studies and one in business, and um, blessed there, blessed with a wife of 25 years and two kids. One is a school teacher in inner city Indianapolis, and my son is gonna graduate from Purdue this December <laughs> in aeronautical engineering. So wow. uh, they're moving on and, uh, and I've been blessed with a, a business career and a lot of, been involved in a lot of uh, projects, uh, both domestically and internationally with missions um, in several countries. So, why, uh, why, the run for, why the run for state representative? Uh, the main reason is I, I have five life objectives, which we won't go into on this radio. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah that'd, yeah, that'd take up too much of Michelle's time. But uh, um, one is, I want to really encourage people to realize their unique and amazing God-given potential. And uh, I think state government is one place where both on education and with economic vibrancy, you can really have a role in uh, helping people realize their potential. You mentioned education as well, Michelle. How does that fit into your campaign? And do you hear a lot of people, a lot of constituents when you're out campaigning talking about education? Yes. Um, and ironically, I've run into a lot of local school teachers um, in both counties. Um, public education is a concern of mine because um, of all of the things, all the factors that have come into play since the Daniels Bennett reforms. Um, and um, the concern about funding, as you know, um, you, you take a, a district like Argus, uh, who had a referendum. Um, in the spring. And what's sad about that is um, not so much that they had a referendum, but that it tore the community apart for a while. Um, there were people, good people on both sides of the issue for a variety of reasons. And um, my concern is it, it's too bad we have to have a referendum or Argus had to do that. I, I've talked to many people down there and I think there's some healing going on, but we've got to find a way to adequately 
um, fund public education um, because as I've said in my campaign these schools are the heart of our communities. Sure. sure. Jack what do you think about education? Well this is one area where I have a, a fair amount of experience. Right. Uh, local school board president for seven years, uh, taught hundreds of students at IUSB in business on the board at Ancilla College, which Duke Belcher used to be on the board sure. uh, at Ancilla College. Um, part of the local community foundation which supports a lot of educational initiatives. So um, both on the experience side have a lot of experience but also listening to people. Uh, Michelle will verify when you go to thousands of doors knocking on their door uh, as you listen to people they want uh, to increase school funding. Um, uh, teachers are inadequately paid. Uh, vocational training is another issue they're, they're concerned about. But if you really talk to parents this testing thing test after test after test. Um, it's just crazy. So um, with a lot of experience and a lot of input from the community, I uh, hope to, I would really like to serve on the Education Committee if I win. And I'm, if Michelle wins, I'm sure she would like to too, to really have an impact. Do we have a teacher shortage in the state of Indiana? We do. For every job uh, that's open, there used to be, I'm told by principals and superintendents, uh, 10, 20 applicants. Uh, now you're getting uh, very few applicants. You get some, but you know you don't want one or two. Uh, and also, as far as the sciences, math is where the real shortage comes in. Do you agree with that? Does I do agree with okay, that. Okay, and what, what do we do about it then? Well, I think we, we have to look at the funding. Um, we have to, um, so we look at a way that, that school districts can start paying teachers more money. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Um, it, Teachers right now, you know, I hear from teachers. Uh, I was in Bourbon the other day who uh, one of the teachers I ran into just knocking on a door said, you know, uh, the, the salaries are just stagnated and um, they can't get ahead. You know, these uh, young teachers get out of school. They have student loans. And, um, uh, you know, we ought to be able to pay people that teach our children. I mean, that, that's one of the most valuable things that we do as a society is teach our children. And we need to pay teachers what they're worth. I know that we're kind of we're kind of honing in on education here. There are a lot of other things that we can talk about and and we'll touch on some of those. But I think education is such a critical issue and it's, it's not really been delved into a lot uh, in the gubernatorial race necessarily. So I'm interested in the opinion that you two have on this. But do I hear you saying that we're going to need to raise our taxes in order to support better education in the state of Indiana? And either one of you can jump into that. Well, you know, two things I think we have to keep in mind. Um, some of the ways that we are um, funding education, we're, we're giving a lot of money to vouchers, charter schools, um, and some of those schools are not playing by the same rules that public schools have to play by. Um, so we're funding education. We're not funding public education. The second thing that is a concern of mine is, you know, allegedly the state is sitting on a $2 billion surplus. So my question is, why are we not funding our public education? And I am not, you know, I, I, vouchers, charter schools, all of those things, should parents have choices? Um, I talked about this last night at a candidate night. There's sort of this or open border thing where, you know, one school kind of steals from the other school, sure. and I, I don't mean steals, but, you know, I'm not sure that there shouldn't be some choices. I don't know that we can turn the clock back, but we can, we, we can put kind of a moratorium, I think, and I think we can take a hard look at how we continue to fun, fund education because we are putting dollars into education. We're just not putting enough dollars into traditional public education, and that's hurting. And it's not just affecting our rural communities. Well, I guess Plymouth, probably Bremen, is a, a, in a sense a rural community. But it's, it's, you know, you look at Carver, you look at um, Argus, you look at Bourbon, those are concerns. But now population um, has decreased the school population in Plymouth. Two weeks ago, there was an article front page of the Plymouth Pilot News. They're losing funding because the population has gone down. So I think, you know, it's really about how we allocate those funds. Jack? I, I, I agree with the allocation of funds. It, the one figure that just startles me 
is that we spend 52% of our state budget on K-12 education. So there, there has to be enough money there. I mean, that, that, that's a large percentage of the state budget. So um, I believe that as schools get more local control, that less bureaucracy, less mandates, that they can be freed up to operate their school. Because um, local people know better how to run their school than uh, bureaucracy in Indianapolis is that that way it'll free up funds uh, for people to be able to um, operate their school how they want to as opposed to how they're mandated uh, to. Michelle, I see you shaking your head in agreement, but I'm, I'm curious because it was a couple years ago, maybe three years ago now, that the state came in and took over schools' general funds. And so do we reverse that then? Do we say to the state, hey, we want those funds back so that we can handle them locally? I, I, I think we should look at handling okay. I, yeah, I really struggle with the state taking over schools, to sure. be honest with you. Sure. Yeah. I, I think um, that's where if a school is a, a poor school, uh, parents, that's where maybe Michelle and I are a little bit different. Parents should have a choice then to send them to some other school. Let the, let the parents decide which schools survive and which ones struggle. And in, I'm thinking more of Indianapolis than around here. Um, that's, it's, it's a travesty in, in what, what I've seen in Indianapolis. Is this a trend uh, that we see the state taking over uh, public school financing? Uh, are they going to go into county government next? That's a well, great. That's a great point, Tom. Yeah, that's a great. Point. That's is this a, all that, part all part of the Kern and Shepherd thing of some years ago? I, I I think there is a concern about that. Okay. I do think that. Yeah, I do think that. And you know, I'm not saying that. You know, we could all collaboratively work together better. Communities could work together better to figure out how we could could make things work. But um, I think there is a trend. To, and I think you lose something. I mean, I, I will tell you, you know, we have good schools in District 17. We really, really do. I was so, I, I have to tell you, one of the best things that has happened to me on this campaign was the opportunity a week ago to speak to government classes at Tippy Valley in Rochester. I will tell you, it, it, that was one of the highlights of my campaign because I, you get energy from those students, and they are bright, and they are articulate, and teachers in those schools and parents of those kids, they ought to be darn proud. Let me tell you, I wish that they could have heard, everybody could have heard that, uh, that exchange of thought, thoughtful ideas, thoughtful questions. So we have great schools. and and. And, you know, there were differences between Tippy Valley and Rochester. Good differences, but there were differences. And it reflected, I think, the local flavors of those communities. And so, yeah, okay. I, I think. Do you want to comment on that, Jack? Yeah, I would, because okay. uh, given uh, how much time I've spent on school initiatives, I've spent a lot of time in schools and with students. And um, I guess it gets back to the students and parents. The kids are just have unbelievable potential. These young people have unbelievable potential. Uh, we've got some teachers that just, we've got to get out of the classroom with government mandates and let teachers teach. I mean, we have a lot of really good teachers that want to equip and inspire these young people to become successful. And some of them, frankly, aren't good at taking tests. Some are. Some are geniuses at automotive repair and other things that don't show up on a test. And so, it, uh, it's just we need to free up schools to have local control so that kids can do amazing things. And, and, and so that's what I'm committed to, to really free up schools and teachers so they can do what they do best, and that's inspire and equip children. Education, a topic I'm sure you hear a lot as you go door to door and talk with constituents. What are some of the other issues that are popping up that you think are important in this campaign? Um, roads and infrastructure, okay. uh, you know, the economy, the fact that I think there are more jobs, but um, not people aren't making enough money. Um, uh, too many low-wage jobs, I believe, and I, I, you know, I'm really concerned about that. Um, okay, what do you hear, Jack? I hear um, a lot about roads and infrastructure, sure. although less and less recently. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why. Maybe everybody's just getting ready for winter. But that was really, <laughs> this summer when I was going door-to-door, -door, heard a lot of that. Uh, a lot of people are um, 
uh, want to know my position if I'm pro-life or not. This is okay. this district is a strong pro-life community um, in Marshall and Fulton County, so ask about that a lot. And I'm, I'm strongly pro-life, and so um, and and economic vibrancy. I mean, we. We want our kids to come back here and grandkids to come back here and live and work and have great opportunities. And um, we've got a ways to go on that. Okay. You know, one of the questions that was asked in the last gubernatorial debate that uh, kind of an off subject, but yet at the same time, I think one that caused a lot of interest was the Sunday sales of alcohol, liquor and beer, of course, in the state of Indiana. And I want to pose that question to both of you as a state representative. Would you vote to open up Indiana to Sunday sales of alcohol? I have, you know what? I have absolutely no idea. I would need to. <laughs> okay. I would need to know. I, I haven't spent any time on that, so I'm, I guess I'm. I'd want to go talk to people's constituents fair to enough. find out where they are on okay. that. Okay, so. fair enough. You know, I have to agree with Jack on that. Yeah. <laughs> and, but what what's funny? I sort of had a feeling that the question would come up, and the truth is, I, I'm, I was waiting for the question and for me to say, I really don't know. Um, but I think it's. Uh, I think it's interesting. Um, an interesting question, and I'm sure it's going to come up. <laughs> I want to ask you, too, and you're a, a commercial on the radio right now. You, you mentioned RIFLA as a thing that you want to kind of combat. So I wanted, uh, wanted you to, to elaborate on that just a little bit. And then, Jack, I want you also to talk about the, the RIFLA thing that was passed by the state and then also was uh, taken away again. I, I, I'm very concerned, and I think it will come up again. Um, and I think that we uh, should grant civil rights to all people, and I'm very passionate about that. And I do not believe in any kind of discrimination about, uh, you know, f for LGBT uh, okay. community. And so I, I am very concerned about that, very passionate about that, and it, you know, I think it tarnished our reputation as a state. I, uh, it's fascinating with Rifa. I was actually in Romania for a month while all this was going on last time, and so um, working with churches and orphanages and things like that, and came back right at the tail end when they were talking about a fix of Rifa. I was actually coming back from O'Hare Airport, and I'm going, I, I have no idea what they're talking about. And plus, I'd spent so time, so much time with the translator. I was looking to somebody to translate what it was, what they were talking about. And um, as I've, I've found out about, it, I basically first place I went was my pastor and said, um, I go to Napanee Missionary Church and Dave Engbrick, I said, what, what, what are your thoughts on what's going on here? Do we, do we need um, a religious freedom um, bill, this bill? And he was, um, he was confident that he thought we did. So um, again, this is me going okay. to people that it affects it, and my pastor, I trust his judgment because he's thought a lot about it and said that, that, that uh, religious freedom uh, bill is something that we needed, so um, that's where I am on it based on uh, my pastor's input. Final question, as a state representative, will you be available to the constituents, to the people in your district well, for, the, for the questions that they have, for the issues that they have, or will you run a very private office? Let's start with Jack. I'll be available because okay. the, the nice thing about my life situation, that's why I ran. It was a lot of my wife saying, you know, you're at the point in life where uh, you have the opportunity to um, give back to the community given um, how blessed we are as a, a couple. And so I've got a lot of flexibility in my schedule based on um, what I'm involved with. So yeah, I hope to be open. And um, again, I hope by just my attitude, and Michelle did it too, uh, you know, we don't know have all the answers. Um, I don't have um, um, insight on things, and so I, I've got to be able to listen to folks, and also uh, not just listen, listen, but to lead around their interests. So I'm hopeful that that's um, um, the way I'd run it. And if not, Chad Hartzler um, <laughs> would give me direct <laughs> feedback. Michelle, um, should I win this office, I will retire from um, my current job. Um, I. It's been a tremendous 18 and a half years, a wonderful opportunity to be able to serve people um, as an adult protective service investigator. But my husband and I discuss this too, and I'm kind of at the point where I could do this full time and be extremely available to constituents. Okay. Why Jack Jordan for state representative? Uh, because we need to 
to make progress on two, two areas, economic vibrancy and on education. And uh, I've had extensive experience in both of those areas and strong support from um, constituencies that represent those areas. So again, people have unique and amazing God-given potentials. So if you give them the education that they deserve and the economic opportunities they deserve, uh, great things can happen. Why Michelle Livinghouse for state representative? Well, because I have tenacity and I never give up. And I have been working, um, I say I've been working in democratic politics for all these years. But the truth is I have been working because in, in causes I believe in and talking to people. And if I could go to the legislature and um, serve in that capacity, then I think that I would do a great job, frankly. Yep. And both of you are looking for a good voter turnout, right? We are. Yeah, we are. Encourage yeah. people to vote. Yes. I, I, that, that's sure. big with me. <laughs> voter yeah. turnout. Okay. Yeah. Michelle Livinghouse, Jack Jordan, thank you very much for your time this morning. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you coming to town. And uh, we appreciate the fact that you're running for state representative. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you so good. much. All Thanks. right. Let's thank Donna Dreddy's and all her crew for all of their help this morning. John at the radio station, thank you very much. And Scott from RTC, we appreciate that. We appreciate the opportunity to broadcast live from downtown Rochester right here on 92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com.